Last week, and for posterity's sake, it's March of 2022, a 106 year old mystery was solved. 10,000 feet beneath the surface of Antarctica's Weddell Sea, the amazingly well preserved wreck of the HMS Endurance was discovered. Now, people have been searching for this wreck for over a century, and finally on March 5th, an expedition called Endurance 22 located it using underwater drones. By an amazing coincidence, the discovery of Endurance happened to fall upon the 100th anniversary of the funeral of the ship's legendary captain, Ernest Shackleton. The scientists who found the wreck came back with incredible videos and photos of the lost ship, and all this has reignited interest in the story of Endurance and its heroic captain. And so in this video, we will share with you a bit more about the discovery of the ship, but mainly focus on the amazing survival story of Ernest Shackleton and the crew of the HMS Endurance, a group who stared down death at the bottom of the world. So Ernest Shackleton was the type of man who was willing to die in pursuit of a dream. For him specifically, that dream was becoming the first man to reach the South Pole. Shackleton had made two attempts to reach the South Pole before endurance the journey we're about to explore. On both of these expeditions, he reached the southernmost point of anyone up to that date, though neither attempt ultimately reached the pole. He also became the first man to climb Mount Erebus, Antarctica's second highest volcano. The achievements of these two voyages made Shackleton a hero back in Britain. However, in early 1912, a Norwegian explorer successfully captured the South Pole. This led Shackleton to settle on a new ambition, to become the first man to cross over the entire continent of Antarctica on foot. He called this new voyage the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition. The crew that undertook it would travel aboard a ship that was fated to make no return journey, a ship aptly named Endurance. Endurance left port on August 8, 1914 and sailed for the South Atlantic. The ship reached the Weddell Sea in mid-December, but began encountering dangerous ice flows many miles further north than they had expected. Over the next month as they traveled toward Shackleton's intended landing spot on Vossel Bay, trouble with ice increased. Here's probably a good time to explain what exactly makes the ice the Endurance was encountering so treacherous. If you ever attempt your own exploration of the Arctic and Antarctic circles, you will encounter two types of ice. The first is known as fast ice. This is any ice that is secured to a fixed object like a shoreline. The second kind of ice is called drift ice. Unlike fast ice, drift ice is completely unfixed and it is pushed along by winds and currents. Occasionally the wind or current will push layers of drift ice into huge masses. When this happens, it's called pack ice. When ships encounter pack ice, the pressure of the shifting layers can begin to squeeze against the vessel's sides with immense amounts of pressure. In many cases, a ship stuck in pack ice can drift hundreds of miles from its original location, but it's being held prisoner by the floating ice. In the worst of cases, the pressure of the pack ice can cause a ship's hull to buckle and eventually sink. Once you understand the dangers of pack ice, you can picture the dread that the sailors aboard the Endurance felt as their journey encountered more and more of this hazardous ice. For weeks, the ship tried to force its way through breaks in the ice called leads, but on February 14th, Endurance found itself completely stuck in pack ice. One of the sailors, Thomas Orderlies, described it as being like an almond stuck in the middle of a chocolate bar. With no hope of breaking out of the ice, it was soon determined that the crew of Endurance would need to wait out the winter aboard their fastened ship. The hope was that spring would melt the ice and bring freedom for the ship. Winter in the Antarctic consists of the dark months of May, June, and July, during which there is almost no sunlight. With their ship drifting further with each passing day and little hope of breaking through until September, Shackleton did whatever he could to keep the morale of the crew high. He used every distraction possible, from dog races on the moonlit ice, celebrations of holidays aboard the ship, to games of hockey and soccer between the crew. Some of the men even performed a play. The months passed by with little change for the stranded sailors and it became clear that the strain placed on endurance by the pack ice was taking its toll. By mid-October, rather than finding the ice melting and letting go of the ship, the squeeze became worse. Sailors described being able to hear the very hull itself bend and crack under the pressure of the ice, saying that the breaking timbers sounded like the blasting of guns. As the condition of the ship worsened, Shackleton began to realize the task of saving Endurance was hopeless. On October 27, 1915, he ordered the crew to abandon ship. A few weeks later, the crew watched from the nearby ice fields as Endurance gave a final moan and disappeared beneath the ice. It would rest there in mystery for the next hundred years. Before Endurance sank, Shackleton ordered to salvage as much food and other provisions from the ship as possible. They left behind anything that might weigh them down on their dangerous march that lay ahead. Tragically, this meant putting down many of the dogs and one cat that had accompanied the men on the ship. Of all the items pulled from Endurance, Australian Frank Hurley, the expedition's official photographer, 
save the things that were perhaps the most historically important. Pearlie had spent his months stranded on the ice taking a series of photographs of Endurance and her surroundings. In total, he took more than 600 photographs of the stranded ships, her men, and the haunting landscapes of the Antarctic. And in the ship's final days, as the sea was already filling the hull of the doomed vessel, Hurley dove into the freezing water to save the glass blade negatives that contained his pictures. Shackleton saw the weight of the photographs as unnecessary and demanded Hurley destroy the plates. However, Hurley compromised with his captain and chose about 100 of the best plates to carry along the journey home. Thanks to Hurley, these surviving photographs are the best window into the experience of the men aboard Endurance. After abandoning Endurance, Shackleton knew a long and dangerous trip lay between the sailors and rescue. The captain's initial plan was to have the men march westward across the ice towards a known food depot at Paulette Island and eventually make their way to a nearby whaling outpost. According to Shackleton's calculations, it would be over 300 miles to the island and another 120 to the outpost. The men set out for the island on October 30th, 1915, but almost immediately the march ran into trouble. The impossible terrain made going slow, and the sailors only managed to cover two miles in the first three days. On November 1st, Shackleton ordered the men to make camp. The march was being scrapped. Escape would have to take place by lifeboat. The crew camped on a flow of drifting ice and waited the next five months for enough ice to break up so that the lifeboats could be launched. Finally, on April 8th, after suffering through food shortages, extreme temperatures, and even a brief mutiny, the ice flow in which the men were camping split in half. Lifeboats were launched into the icy sea and the men aimed for land in the distance. The sailors spent the next week in some of the worst conditions imaginable. Crammed into three small lifeboats, the men suffered through temperatures of negative 20 degrees with almost no food. They were regularly soaked by seawater, putting the men in serious danger of hypothermia. On April 15th, the crew reached the nearest point of solid land, a small outcropping of rock they named Elephant Island. With Shackleton's leadership, the crew escaped the ice, but hundreds of miles of open ocean still lay between the men and hope for rescue. While Elephant Island offered more protection than camping on the treacherous ice, Shackleton knew it was not a place the men could stay for very long. It was too remote to encounter passing ships, and there weren't enough animals to hunt for food. If the men were going to make it home, the best hope for rescue lay on South Georgia Island, which was 800 miles away across the Southern Ocean. If a small portion of the crew could make the crossing, they could summon help from one of the many whaling ships that visited South Georgia Island and then returned to Elephant Island to rescue the remaining men. Shackleton chose five of his best men to join him in the crossing to South Georgia. On April 24th, the men launched the 22 and a half foot lifeboat James Caird and headed for South Georgia. It took only four weeks of supplies, and in his journal, Shackleton said if the crossing took longer than that, the men in the lifeboat were already doomed. If the Elephant Island crossing had been harrowing, the crossing to South Georgia was nothing short of hell on earth. High winds swept up waves around the ship, coating everything including the men in a thick layer of ice. On May 5th, the weather got even worse. About 130 miles from the western point of South Georgia, the small lifeboat was tossed around by waves that Shackleton described as larger than any he'd ever seen in his whole life at sea. Despite it all, the men cheered at the first sighting of South Georgia on May 8th. But with potential rescue in sight, the sea seemed determined to throw everything it could at the sailors. As they searched for a beach amidst the high cliffs of the island's coast, the wind shifted and started up hurricane force gales upon the boat. For 24 hours, the men fought to avoid being crushed against the rocky shore. Finally, the weather eased, and on May 10th, the men made landfall in an area on the southern side of the island called King Hakon Bay. Because the storm had pushed the lifeboat off course, a crossing of the mountainous interior still lay between the men and the whaling ship grounds on the north side. However, Shackleton's crew was at its breaking point. Two of the men were in such dire condition that they would not be able to travel any further. In order to find help, Shackleton and two other sailors marched for 36 hours with no map across an endless landscape of mountains and glaciers. Finally, on the morning of May 20th, Shackleton and his companions descended down a 30-foot waterfall and finally collapsed into safety at the whaling station of Stromness. This is the actual waterfall the men climbed down. As Shackleton reflected back upon the brutal final march in the years to come, he would describe a phenomenon that has become common among adventurers who survived near-death disasters. He described a feeling as if a fourth man hiked along the three weary sailors, encouraging them to make it through the last leg of the journey. Regardless of if the force that carried the men across the mountains of Stromness was supernatural, the determination and will to survive that was exhibited by Shackleton has been awe-inspiring for a hundred years since. With his own rescue secured, Shackleton wasted no time arranging to save his remaining men. 
First, the men at the far end of South Georgia Island were collected on May 21st. Three days later, he secured the use of a whaler to rescue the 22 men still stranded on Elephant Island. It would end up taking three months and four attempts at rescue before Shackleton found a ship able to break through the ice and reach Elephant Island. On August 30th, 1916, 128 days after Shackleton had left for help, rescue came for the stranded crew. It had been 20 months since the expedition had first begun, but somehow every man was still alive. Shackleton had done the impossible, facing almost certain death and more suffering than is really imaginable, but coming through it all without losing a single man under his command. While the men of Endurance returned to their home countries as heroes, the ship that had been carried into the frigid waters of the Antarctic Circle was assumed to be lost forever. Though the general area of the ship's sinking was known, attempts to locate the wreckage ended in failure as the same dangerous ice that took down Endurance proved to be the greatest barrier to finding the wreck. But in the last few years, things began to change. A combination of improvements in technology and decreases in sea ice due to climate change have made penetrating the Weddell Sea more achievable and finally led to the discovery of Endurance. The successful voyage to locate the sunken ship launched from South Africa in February of 2022. The scientists sailed to the Antarctic aboard a 440-foot-long polar research vessel called the S.A. Agulis. The ship was designed to bulldoze its way through miles of thick ice. Once the ship had reached the recorded area where the Endurance sank, the rest of the search was performed by underwater autonomous vehicles built by Saab called Sabertooths. These drone-like submarines contained cameras, sonar, and LED lights. The Sabertooth scanned the sea floor two weeks before one of the vehicles sent back sonar images of what appeared to be a ship lying upright on the sea floor. It didn't take long to confirm that this was indeed Endurance. Now we get the privilege to see these stunning pictures of the ship taken by the Sabertooths. Because of the extreme depth and low temperature of the water, the timbers of Endurance have been better preserved than almost any other wreck. In many of the pictures, you can pick out sea creatures that have turned the wreckage into part of their ecosystem. Because of a 60-year-old treaty protecting the Antarctic, the wreckage cannot be touched. Though Endurance will forever remain at the bottom of the icy waters, these magnificent images and videos act as a testament to the men who sailed under the greatest of danger and their leader who risked everything to bring them home.